So you've decided to start self-hosting some stuff at home. You've been moving services out of the public cloud and slowly moving them into your self-hosted private cloud. And while doing all of this, you've been searching for a productivity platform, one that you can use to collaborate with others and one that you can use to share some files. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about self-hosting a productivity platform with Nextcloud. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you want to continue the conversation about self-hosting some services there, we can. So let's talk about self-hosting Nextcloud. So what is Nextcloud? Well, Nextcloud is a productivity platform that you can self-host. It puts you in control of your data and how you want that to be shared. You can share and collaborate documents, send and receive email, manage your calendar, and even do some video chatting if you'd like. And it's able to do all of this while keeping that data on your network, in your control. And in theory, this platform could be used to replace many of the services that you use in the public cloud. Things like Google Drive, Google Docs, Hangouts, Slack, or any other chat client, and even something like Dropbox. And while some of these features are core to the product, the others come in the form of a third-party integration using their app store. And while this might seem pretty complicated to set up, we're gonna walk through setting it up and we'll get you going here in a couple of minutes. Now, my choice for installing and managing services is Docker and Kubernetes. And I get that capability from something called Rancher. If you're not familiar with Rancher, Rancher is an easy way to get Docker and then Kubernetes. I have a step-by-step -step tutorial that walks through setting up Docker, Rancher, and Kubernetes in just a couple of minutes. And after that, you'll have a platform not only for Nextcloud, but for all of your Docker and Kubernetes needs. And so with that out of the way, let's get started. Well, the first thing you might need is Rancher. Well, I just talked about how to set that up, but if you decide to go with plain old Docker, we'll walk through that too. So then we're gonna need a Docker image. I typically choose linuxserver.io for all of my Docker images. They build and maintain most of my favorite ones. And if we go into documentation and we go under Nextcloud, we should see our Docker image here. Under usage, we'll see the Docker commands here. And later we'll map this to a Rancher config. But if we go under Docker CLI, we'll see the commands here to spin it up with plain old Docker. Here we'll see Docker run, where we're gonna run it as a daemon. Next, we'll use the name flag, which will set the name of our container when it spins up. Then we'll send an environment variable of PUID and PGID. Now these map to the user that has Docker privileges and it helps with permissions. And we'll talk about how to get that here in a second. Next, we're gonna pass in the environment variable of TZ and that's your time zone. Then we're gonna use P to publish or expose some ports. And you can see here that they expose port 443 or SSL. Next, we're gonna map a volume to our config. And on the left side, that's a path to the data we're going to persist. And on the right is a path within the container. And the same goes with the next volume we're gonna mount, which is data. On the left will be the path we're going to persist. And on the right is going to be the path within the container. And this will help us persist both our config and our data. And the next flag, restart unless stop, is going to restart the container if it crashes. This will help make sure that our container is always up unless we stop it. And the last argument is Linux server slash nextcloud. And this is the docker org slash image name that we're going to use. Now take note, you don't see a tag here at the end. This then assumes we're going to use the latest tag. If you don't want to pin to latest, you'll need to look in Docker Hub to see what the version is you want to pin to. After that, add it to the end. So now back in our Rancher server, let's create a workload. So let's click on deploy. First, we're going to name our workload. Let's name it Nextcloud. Next, we'll set the Docker image. And this is going to be the Docker org slash the image name. So let's use Linux server slash Nextcloud. And just to illustrate what I meant about latest, if you don't specify a tag, it's actually passing in latest as the tag, but we don't need to use that. Next, let's add our port. So let's click add port. And for port mapping, we'll have to map our HTTPS port. Now here I've named it HTTPS and we're gonna publish the container port of 443 to the host port of 9700. This is because we don't wanna use 443 on our host because it's already taken. Next, we'll add a few environment variables. The two environment variables we need are PUID and PGID. They suggest the value of a thousand, but this may not be the ID of your user or the group. So in order to find that, let's SSH into this node and find our ID. First, we'll SSH into our node. Once we're in, we'll just type ID. And you can see here in the output, my UID is 1001 and my GID is 1001. So 
let's put that in the form. Next, we'll need to map some volumes. So let's click Add Volume. And here, since I only have one node, I'm gonna choose by mount a directory from the node. If you're using more than one node or you have a different storage strategy, you'll wanna choose that option there. But I'm gonna mount the file system directly from the node. So I'll choose that. So the two values we know right now are the volume name, which I'm naming config, and then the mount point, which is slash config, which is slash config, within that container. The one we don't have yet is the path on node. So in order to get that, let's SSH back into our server, let's create a folder, and let's add it here. So here, I'm gonna make a directory called nextcloud, and then let's CD in here, and let's create two folders, one called config and one called data. And if we do an LS, we should see the output. So these are the folders that are gonna house both our data and our config. And you'll wanna remember the path on node so that we can use it. So the path on node for me for config is slash home slash techno tim slash nextcloud slash config. And let's add our data volume now. So again, add volume, bind mount a directory from a node, and here we're gonna use volume name of data. The path on node is slash home slash techno tim slash nextcloud slash data. And then the path within the container is slash data. So after that, there's one more thing we might wanna change, and that's our scaling policy. If we're using a single node and host port, we'll need to choose a different option. So in scaling and upgrade policy, we'll wanna change this to kill all pods, then start new. And you can choose this option if you're not using a single node, but I think this is our only option if we are using a single node and host port, because two pods can't occupy the same port. And then we'll launch, and we can see here it's spinning up, it's creating our container, and we can see it's up and running. So let's go into the logs. If we look in the logs, it looks like it spun up okay. It created a self-signed certificate for us to use and it ran a lot of startup scripts. So now it's ready to use. Let's go check out Nextcloud. So once we go to the IP address and the port we specified, we'll get a self-signed certificate error. Now this is normal because it's a self-signed certificate. So we can advance here and now we can see our Nextcloud installation. So the first thing we'll need to do is create an account. For obvious reasons, you should choose a secure username and password here. Next, you might notice the warning about using SQLite, and it tells you that you should only use this for minimal installations. Now, for home use, this is totally fine, but if you plan on using this in a small business or a home with lots of users, you might wanna choose a different storage option. And so if we drop down in storage and database, we have the option to change out our database. The default is using SQLite slash data, and that's mapped to our container's volume but we have the option to switch to MySQL and MariaDB as well as PostgreSQL. But for our installation, we're gonna choose SQLite and use the container storage. The next option you see is to install some recommended apps. And I'm gonna choose yes here, but we can install them later if we like. And after that, we can click finish setup. So this is now creating our account, configuring our database, as well as installing the recommended applications. And these are ones recommended by Nextcloud. And once in, you'll be greeted with the dashboard. We can see the new Nextcloud Hub, some marketing information about Nextcloud, and here's our dashboard. So we'll start out with recommended files, talk and mentions, important mail, and upcoming events. We can choose to customize our dashboard. Here we can choose to include additional widgets, and we can choose to change our background. In the recommended files, we'll see files that they've uploaded, but we'll visit that here in a second. And if we want, we can go into settings and we can install some more applications. So here we'll see all of the recommended applications that were installed, along with some that come with Nextcloud. We can see which ones are disabled, we can see different app bundles, we can see some of the featured applications, some customizations, dashboard apps, files, games, you name it. If we wanted to download a new app, we would just click download and enable. It will pull down this new application and then enable it. So we install this analytics application and it looks like it's for our dashboard. So let's go back to our dashboard. And if we go back to customize, we should see this reports option. And it's blank now, but it will generate some data soon. So going into our files, we actually have a file browser here, as well as a previewer here too. We can preview a PDF or any of the file types that we upload. Now we can create or upload files here. And this is how I use it as a Dropbox replacement. So if you wanna use this for collaboration, you can. You can share out these files or edit these files remotely. But if you wanna use it more as a Dropbox replacement, here's how I do it. So first I'll create a folder and I'll call this public. And in this public folder, I'm gonna add a file. And let's upload this image. Now we can preview the image from here, but we wanna share this. And so what I typically do is create a share link to this whole entire folder. Now you can create a share link directly from this file, or you can create one from the folder. And if you click public share and copy the link, we'll see that when going to that link, we can get to that file. And because this is a public link, anyone can get to it. 
Now, you might have noticed that it's going to copy the URL from your server, and this is a private IP. So at some point, you'll want to make your server public so that it's accessible through the internet. But before you do, let's do a couple of things. First, we'll want to go into settings. Then we'll want to change a few things in security. Now, I highly recommend using a secure password here. Now, you should have already set one up, but just in case, make a secure password here. After ensuring you have a secure password, let's turn on two-factor authentication. So we'll go into administration, security, and then we'll go under two-factor authentication. So we'll want to turn this on. We'll want to make sure that this is turned on for admins. Then we'll save this. Then we'll want to go back into apps. Then we'll go under security. Then we'll want to search for TOTP. And this is a two-factor TOTP provider. Let's download and enable. Then we'll go back into security for our user. Here, we'll turn on the TOTP Authenticator app. Let's enable it. And now we can scan this barcode. So here, you'll want to use the Google Authenticator or something like Authy and scan this barcode. Then we'll enter a password. Then we'll verify. And now we're verified. So let's sign back out and let's sign back in. Now we'll be greeted with a two-factor auth prompt. Now we'll enter a code and now we can get in. Okay, so now we're ready to host this publicly. And that's a really big topic, but I've already solved this in another video. In a previous video, I showed you how to set up traffic in MetaLLB to self-host all your services securely. This will help you set up an SSL certificate as well as dynamic DNS. And after you get that installed and set up, you can switch over this workload to use the MetaLLB and Traffic Load Balancer. That will enable you to host this service securely. And after that, you'll have a securely self-hosted collaboration platform where you can share files, collaborate, chat, and even set up email and calendar events. And the App Store has more and more apps every day, which give you more and more capabilities within Nextcloud. And so the next time you go to share a large file with a friend, maybe your FTP server isn't the greatest choice. And so, what do you think about Nextcloud? What do you think spinning up your own self-hosted collaboration site? What do you think about using this to replace something like Dropbox? Is it scary self-hosting some of your services in the cloud? If so, let me know in the comments section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, Hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So, thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. Don't look at my lipstick when I drink because it doesn't really show up that well. Isn't that crazy? It, it totally can... So weird. And the lipstick is like so precise. Like, do I have lipstick on my teeth? Do I have lipstick on my teeth, anyone? Isn't that so crazy? How precise it is? Oh, anyways, okay.